For today's bike check, we are checking out Caro Gehrig's Norco Range, the brand new high pivot enduro bike. Let's check out the details. Okay, so starting with the heart of the bike, the all important bit, the brand new range frame. Now you might notice the front triangle shares a lot of similarities with the downhill bike is pretty much the same. Uh, it's using a different linkage, of course, in here. It's got a different back end, different amount of travel, different intention. Carbon fibre front, and when it comes to geometry and sizing, this one is a size large. It's got 480 mil reach on here, 77 degree seat angle, really nice and steep there if you follow the imaginary line from the BB axle up to the middle of the saddle rails. And it's got a 63.25 degree head angle uh, with the standard 170 mil fork on the front. Of course, racers can tune that by running a higher or a lower front end on the bike. 170 mil travel on the rear, geared up around a coil shock and it's running the high pivot system with the idler wheel. Uh, now Norco have completely refined this because on their Aurum downhill bike they have the high pivot placement as well. Uh, the bike is insanely good when it comes to really rough terrain uh, and this one is certainly no different. Chain stays are proportional according to the size of the bike. On the rear here you've got 442.5 millimeters and it's got a whole plethora of amazing gear on here. Now, when you take a look at this bike from a side profile, it's almost hard to believe it's a size large. I mean, look how low slung the geometry of this is. Uh, it really does look more like a downhill bike than many other enduro bikes at the moment. And in fact, if you look under the BB shell here, you can see it's got a protector on that lower link, uh, which protrudes quite a way underneath. I mean, the position it's in, it's just going to glide over stuff if you did sump out, but it's a pretty impressive piece of design when you look at it. And I've got to say, it feels incredibly supple when you just cycle the suspension through um, through the cycle. Really cool stuff. Okay, so let's uh, get up to the bars and check out what she's running up there. And up to the cockpit of the bike is running a 760mm Deity carbon bar. As we know, a lot of the pros are choosing to run carbon bars just for a slightly softened approach, a bit of vibration, damping. Uh, brake levers themselves, these are cool because these are customised. So the Magura MT7 Pros, and one of the cool thing with the Maguras is you can actually customise them in a few different ways. There's a number of different brake lever choices. Uh, these ones are the Loic Bruni editions. Uh, we actually saw the prototype of these uh, a while back on GMBN Tech. And you can actually have custom graphics on. It's really cool to see her own customs on board on there. Uh, and just a single spacer on the underneath, so 10 mil spacer top and bottom there uh, for a bit of fine tuning. Uh, Acros headset in there. And then down to the front end, got Fox 38 running 170 mil travel with two volume spacers in it currently. Uh, super burly fork, completely appropriate for the type of riding and racing that she's doing. Now the tyres are an interesting thing. Not too familiar with the Kenda tyres, don't see them quite as much at the moment, but they're certainly making their mark in the world of enduro riding and racing. Uh, these are the Hellcat Pros. No insert in the front, but set up tubeless, running a Cushcore insert in the rear, but not running the downhill one, uh, actually running the cross-country one. A little bit slimmer, a bit easier to get on and off, should you damage a wheel or damage a tyre in the event of a race. Uh, pretty interesting stuff. And DT wheels up front here. Uh, 1200s on this particular bike, straight pull spokes, uh, bladed spokes actually, quite a nice profile on those. Um, fit and forget front end really. Interesting to see though, uh, on this particular bike, using traditional six bolt rotors on here, rather than going for the center lock, which is very popular with DT. Uh, of course it might limit with the rotor choice with the Maguras. Cool setup though. Let's go check out the transmission, shall we? So transmission wise, running SRAM on this particular bike, as you can see, uh, kind of interesting because you've got SRAM and Fox mixture on here. Uh, quite unusual, I tend to see Shimano bikes running Fox suspension, uh, SRAM bikes running RockShox suspension, but uh, hey, it all seems to work. Uh, SRAM GX Eagle access on here, so uh, really interesting to see that. Great piece of kit. I know she's not running the external protector on the battery. Uh, you don't really need to, it's just there to stop your mate nicking the battery, essentially. Uh, that beautiful cassette work of art, uh, up to the 50 tooth on there, so 1050, 500% gear ranging, 170mm cranks on the front there, race face next. They're super light, actually, those cranks with a 32 tooth chainring and Crank Brothers mallet enduro pedals. And interesting to see that uh, you get a choice of sort of touch points, the paddles on the access shifters. It's also running the rocker that I do and also running it with the gears flipped on there. A really cool setup. And finishing kit on the bike, it's got a tube strap on there, full size bottle in a cage, uh, Fox transfer dropper post and one of the Physique Gravita Alpaca saddles. Uh, super cool setup. Let's find out a bit more when we chat to Caro. 
Okay, standing right in front of me is the brand new Norco range. And this one belongs to Kerry Gehrig, right here. Let's get talking about this bike because this is probably the most exciting bike I've seen this week. There's a few other cool ones floating around, but Norco's always been quite close to my heart. <laughs> so let's start with, well, firstly, let's start with your height because this is a big bike. Yeah, this is definitely a big bike and uh, definitely the most exciting bike I've ever ridden. Like I'm one meter 80 tall okay, and yeah. this is a size large I'm riding. So it really, I mean, I guess because it's 29, it really doesn't look like a large, it's so low slung. Looks wicked, looks like more like a downhill bike. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so brand new platform, literally just launched. It's got that idler wheel at the top, it's got the high pivot. Tell us a little bit about this amazing bike. So this is a size large range frame with a 77 seat angle, 63.25 head angle. And kitted out with Fox suspension, um, DHX2 with a 450 coil. Yep, yeah, okay. So that's 170 mil travel on the rear. Exactly. And on the front as well. And on the front. Pretty well balanced bike. So extremely slack. It's got that great climbing seat angle. Uh, and then of course the high pivot. So how does that feel? I bet that must be unreal here on these sort of trails. Yeah, the high pivot is definitely a game changer. It likes it's so supple and sensitive on the small bump stuff and it takes the big hits like a champ like it's unreal what you can like throw this bike into it's just you try out things that you didn't feel were possible before and it just opens up like a new horizon of of riding really yeah. like real game changer so is there a, is there a downside perhaps a climbing or something because it's it looks so downhill biased with <laughs> yeah. the setup i was actually very very concerned it wouldn't climb that well because i mean it just looks like a, a massive bike super beefy and yeah it's fairly on the heavy side too i mean it's not like built lightweight right yeah yeah so we took it to our most technical tra trail at home that uh, I usually struggle a lot riding up those technical features and I actually just made, made it up things I never did before on my light trail bike. So yeah, that was definitely a turning point where I was like, wow, okay, this bike is capable for anything really. Yeah, I think people get a little bit carried away with weight sometimes. And let's face yeah, it, when, when you've got mountains like this, you don't always need a super light bike. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like you want to have a bike that's like uh, performing the most, the best on the descent. Yeah. But you also got to get to the top of the mountain, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, like, but it's like, it's still climbing very well and I'm super stoked about that. Okay, so how do you like your, your suspension to feel? You know, some races like it firm, some races soft, slow, all that sort of stuff. I really like the beginning, like very soft. Yep. And then like getting more supple, more support to, towards the end of the suspension. So we're riding two volume spaces right now and like 87 PSI. Yep. And we tried between 450 um, coil spring and the 475 and chose the 450 now, but like still figuring it out as we only have the bike since a week. So. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so that, that must be a strange thing in itself. So it's the first race of the year and people haven't been at training camps and things. So you're just straight in yeah. with this bike. So, you know, how do you feel on it? Do you feel confident straight yeah, away? Yeah, really, like it was definitely love on first sight. And uh, I felt immediately that this bike is like made to go fast. And it was super exciting for the first outing. It surely is. You don't know, right? Yeah, Until yeah. you actually are racing. So yeah, it was cool to actually just, yeah, place into the top 10 again. And that's definitely a confidence booster for sure. Awesome. Okay, so let's move on to your, your handlebar area here. So what sort of handlebar width do you prefer? I ride the handlebar on a 760 okay. centimeter width. Yeah, so we've seen some races as short as 740, but they're much smaller. You're quite tall, so you need the bigger yeah, bar. Yeah, so I wide shoulder so yeah. I can handle it. <laughs> um, and with the brake levers, are they the standard levers or are they different from... No, so this is the, the Loic Bruni brake lever. Okay. Yeah. I think it helps a lot with um, hand fatigue. Yeah. So it's the most comfortable brake lever we tried. Yeah, it, look, it looks really cool. And you've got your own custom graphics on there as well, which is nice to see. Yeah, it's super cool. Like the brakes are very well customizable. Like you can choose between like six brake levers. So yeah. you're going to find the match. So I've not ridden these. I've ridden most brand brakes, but everyone says these are insanely powerful. Yeah, they're super yeah, powerful. They're, they're really almost sharp. Yeah, definitely. Okay, and so the rotor side, so that 203 or 
two, 203 both yeah, yeah front and rear and a uh, four four pot calipers okay so uh onto the wheels then so carbon or alloy on wheel choice and do you run inserts on the inside like this is a dt swiss ex2200 carbon wheel and we have a cash core cross country on the back yeah nothing Only, on the front nothing on the front okay uh, do you always run a cash core on there yeah, always XC cash core. Okay. Because I don't feel capable of removing the downhill one yeah. in the race if yeah. it's needed. I, I hear some people are actually really concerned about that. Yeah. Hard, hard to go on. And it's been enough for us for sure. I mean, the main purpose of it is like to really like keep the tire out if you have a flat tire, yeah. and that's perfect. Okay, and tires. So. The Kenda tyres are just not familiar to me, so tell me a little bit about these. Yeah, it's our first year on Kenda. This is the Hellcat in HEC gravity casing on the front and the Pinner in gravity casing in the back as well. They, uh, they feel really soft. Yeah, they're very soft and like this, yeah, amazing traction and good grip for sure. Cool. Right, uh, transmission then. So. If we start with the cranks, what length are the cranks? 170 race face okay. next or crank. Okay, so that's two people now on 170s. Everyone else has been 165s. Really? Yeah. So Jesse actually was the only other person on, on 170s. Yeah. Yeah, okay. the end of his cranks is destroyed. <laughs> Just from hitting the floor the whole time. Uh, and what size chainring? <laughs> it's a 32 chainring. Okay, and do you keep the same chainring size wherever you're riding? Yeah, usually yes. Okay, and then and then out back is that the I guess that's the full size tram block on there? Um yeah, the it's 52. The, it's a 50. Okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah, 1050. And you're running SRAM access. Yes. Okay, so how do you like your shifter? So I see you've got the different like rocker paddle, I think this one's called. Yeah, that's uh, the new one. And I feel like this is like a bit more intuitive for shifting. Yeah. It's our first season on it and it's definitely been a bit of a challenge to get used to it. Which, which way around do you have the shifting on yours? Um, easier up. Uh, so, yeah, I've got the same. I had it the other way around to start with. And I was just like, oh, <laughs> so my God. Yeah, totally. <laughs> cool. Okay. Um, I think that's that's about it. We covered most of the stuff on the bike. Yeah. Uh, if there, unless there's anything you particularly want to talk about that we need to know about with your with your bike. No, not really. I don't know. What else is there? Well, it's long. It's round. It's green. It's long. It's slack. It's sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. Thank you. Thanks for taking us through the bike. Thank you. Oh, well, there we go. That's Caro Gehrig's Norco Range Enduro race bike. Uh, it's definitely one of the coolest bikes I've seen for a while. Uh, I've got a bit of a thing for Norco bikes, and this one just looks right. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments underneath, and we'll see you in the next video. See you later.